Vietnam's electronic industry is booming. Foreign investors from Samsung to Intel and every major technology multinational company are pouring billions of dollars towards Vietnam for the construction of their factories. Data from the United Nations Comtrade database even shows that the total exports of the entire electrical and electronic equipment industry have contributed to a whopping 131.3 billion US dollars in total exports for 2021, which easily makes Vietnam one of the world's biggest ever exporters in the electronic industry. This is strongly driven by the many multinational companies operating within the country. Samsung, for instance, is reported to have a cumulative investment of over $17.5 billion in the country, which employs over 170,000 people at industrial parks in Bac Ninh and Thái Nguyen provinces. Samsung's factories, which make mobile phones and electronic components, now account for 20% of Vietnam's total export turnover. Likewise, Samsung is followed by several other companies such as Intel, the American Semiconductor Company, other Korean investors such as LG, and even Japanese investors such as Panasonic and Canon. The rise of Vietnam's electronic industry, however, is already known throughout the local borders of the country. Little, of course, is known about it overseas. Nobody outside of Vietnam other than a few individuals may even know that Vietnam is slowly becoming the hub for electronic manufacturing, which is a trend that many are even expecting to continue in the future. So just just how did Vietnam become such a huge superstar in such a competitive industry? And what are the trends that the country may possess in the future? Let's all understand this from the very beginning. Vietnam's entire electronic industry at the very start can be seen as a very big laggard. The country, after all, until 1986, was in a strong socialist ideology, where the regime that ruled Vietnam had controlled the entire economic system. This also means that all of the Vietnamese electronic companies were state-owned, making them very inefficient to the point that their operations were limited to low-value works such as small-scale assembly from imported goods for production. Moreover, Vietnam had also seen further weak growth in its entire electronic industry as the country had a trade embargo imposed by the United States until 1994, which further meant that Vietnam's electronic sector had little access to technological inputs available to Western countries. These two issues were constraining the rise of Vietnam's electronic industry. However, when the Doi Moi reforms took place in 1986, everything started to change. The development of the entire electronic industry quickly took shape, which saw an average growth of around 20 to 45 percent per year from the decade prior to the 21st century. The extraordinary growth it saw was reflected by the end of the 1990s, which saw over a hundred electronic factories and units assembling consumer electronic products. At the same time, the foreign investment laws that had once been a big issue in Vietnam's economic growth were loosened, leading the way for several foreign investors to pour money into the country. Vietnam's Ministry of Industry and Trade of Vietnam saw over 2,787 joint ventures established in the period between 1986 and 2006. However, while Vietnam has successfully implemented the initial steps to becoming an electronic hub, these years were still not the golden years of the country's electronic industry. In 2001, the country was still ranked 47th in the entire world when it came to electronic exports. Furthermore, the country's overall exports were still not significant enough, despite years of foreign investment inflows. This is even after Samsung and other Korean investors came into the country around the late 2000s. The latest data gathered from the World Bank shows that its high-technology exports of Vietnam were only about $3 billion in 2008, a very small amount compared to its neighboring countries. Thailand, for instance, had over $33 billion of high-tech exports, whereas Malaysia had $55 billion in 2009. However, these were also the very same years that Vietnam's electronic industry would finally see its golden period. An agreement was signed in 2007 which saw Vietnam join the World Trade Organization, which had set the stone for several multinational companies to pour on billions of dollars worth of foreign investments. Samsung Electronics, for instance, was granted its first investment registration certificate with a registered capital of about $670 million around 2008. Vietnam's ascension to the WTO was the key monument. 
Many analysts and research articles stated it to be the key engine for the rise of Vietnam's electronic industry. But it is also easy to see that the WTO membership had set the country's economy as a whole to rise. It is stated by the General Statistics Office that the number of electronic enterprises grew from 613 in 2010 to over 1,399 by 2016. Likewise, total exports of electronics also grew massively from $5.8 billion in 2010 to a surprising increase of more than $70 billion by by 2017. Indeed, the rise of Vietnam's electronic industry can be seen from the decade starting in 2010 and was partly driven by the ascension to the WTO. By 2019, Vietnam's ranking in the world of electronics has gone up to 12th, an increase from 47th in 2001. Further data compiled by professors from the Hanoi University of Science and Technology also saw that by the end of 2016, the accumulated FDI in the electronic sector of Vietnam had reached over $20 billion, largely, however, coming from Samsung, which has already poured in over $14.8 billion, followed by Intel at $1 billion, LG at $1.5 billion, Nidec, a Japanese manufacturing firm of optimal meters and micrometers at $1 billion, and Taiwan's Foxconn Group at $1 billion as well. The electronics industry's rise today is larger than what it even was in 2016. There is no new report that estimates how much the entire electronic industry has now received. A quick glance at the total FDI attraction investment published by the Foreign Investment Agency can, however, already give us a great story. The report published by the Ministry of Planning and Investment saw the cumulative FDI towards the manufacturing and processing industry has received a whopping 260 $62 billion as of early 2023. Electronics in part of these are also very big. We have seen announced investments such as Foxconn pouring more money into Vietnam, which is a Taiwanese company that has a cumulative total FDI investment of about $1.5 billion by 2020. Yet various estimates showed that the company's total revenues have reached nearly $10 billion by the year 2021. And the company is even projecting that in three to five years, their total revenues in Vietnam will reach a whopping $40 billion. Further electronic investments were also made. LG has recently announced by the end of 2022 that it plans to invest an additional $4 billion, which is a lot of money on top of the already $5.3 billion invested. Vietnam's electronic industry rise was partly due to many factors. Some can say that it is because of the ascension to the WTO, whereas others can see it from the Doi Moi reform period. Others can also note that it was the continued support from the government to adopt proper policies. However, there are truly a lot of reasons why. Nevertheless, the most important thing that we need to understand next is the future of the entire industry. The future of Vietnam's electronic industry is going to be big. Several projections were even already being stated in the near few years. The ruling government of Vietnam even stated that it wants to boost high-tech investments more with the goal to become a global manufacturing hub for companies such as Samsung and Intel. Vietnam's industrial development strategy to 2025 with a vision by 2035 even shows several targets for the future. Some key points to understand are the likes of the development of policies to support foreign investors, the creation of clusters based on industrial parks and even the provision of financial incentives. Finally, it is also worth noting that Vietnam is also trying to shift its electronic manufacturing from low value to high value. Vietnam at this very stage still sees massive amounts of its factories in low value works such as product assemblies and testing. However, the government of Vietnam and even several multinational companies have dedicated several resources to moving the country into higher value works. Samsung, for instance, has stated that it is launching Southeast Asia's largest research and development center in Vietnam. Electronic firm Pegatron has also said the same thing. R&D centers are vital in improving not only Vietnam's stance in the overall value chain, but also helping improve human capabilities. But anyway, do let us know what you think. How big do you think Vietnam's electronic industry will be in the coming decade? Or even, why do you think Vietnam succeeded in the first place? Thanks for watching.